I could hear a strange humming sound coming from the other room. When I opened the door, the walls and ceiling looked like they were moving. I'm Tom Stewart, and this is my paranormal story. Before I start this episode, I just want to say, I know. I know it's been a while since I added a new episode. Thank you everyone for all of your emails and Facebook messages. Everything is great. Thank you for checking in on me. You know, now that things are getting back to normal again, all of a sudden, I'm busy. Which is a good thing. It feels like we've reached the light at the end of the tunnel. But don't worry. I plan to set aside plenty of time for the podcast as I restructure my schedule. Because I love telling my stories, and I've missed doing it over the past month or so. Now, I don't want to be too wordy here in the beginning. Uh, I know you're anxious for a new episode, but I've gotten a lot of emails over the past month, and I just want to thank you, everyone, for writing to me and for sharing your stories with me. I've also been able to give out some advice about paranormal situations, which I'm always happy to do. So feel free to email me anytime at myparanormalstorypodcast at gmail.com. A bunch of you purchased t-shirts and mugs recently. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. I've also gotten a lot of donations too. So big thank yous go out to Sarah Lynn, Harold Taylor, Renato Da Silva, Sarah Reyes and Bonnie Klein for helping me keep this podcast going because unfortunately it does cost money to do this so if you'd like to buy a t-shirt or a mug or make a donation to help support the podcast you can do that at my website myparanormalstory.com oh and don't forget I have a second podcast that I'm working on now called Celebrity Paranormal Experiences Each episode, I research and tell the story of someone famous who has had a bizarre encounter with ghosts, UFOs, and other strange phenomena. It's available on just about all podcast apps now, like Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and others. Or you can just listen to it at cpxshow.com. Okay, that's enough of that. Here's this week's episode. I was sort of living a double life. During the week, I lived in the city in an apartment with my mother. And on the weekends, I'd stay with my father at his place near the woods. Both places had their differences, but neither had a shortage of places for me to find adventure. It was a typical early fall weekend, cloudy with a slight chill in the air. And like usual, I was staying with my father, anxious to spend some time with my weekend friends. Except this weekend, there was no one around. Andy was the one I most looked forward to seeing. But he and his family had gone away for the weekend. So I was all alone and kind of bored. So I decided I was gonna take a hike. I'm not really the hiking type, as a kid or as an adult. But for some reason, on this day, I decided to fill up my backpack with a few things I might need and head out into the woods. And by a few things I might need, I mean a can of Pringles and a bottle of Mountain Dew. And I also brought a flashlight and a pocket knife, just in case. But I wasn't really dressed for hiking, I was wearing a typical pair of jeans, t-shirt, hoodie, and some high-top basketball sneakers. But it would have to do. It was just after lunchtime when I set off on my hike. I'd been in these woods plenty of times before, but I've never strayed too far from the general area. When my friends were around, we would actually spend a lot of time in these woods climbing trees, making forts, playing games. My favorite game was 
capture the flag. The woods behind the house were perfect for it. There was this long area, about half the size of a football field, that was just all grass. No trees or bushes or anything. So we would divide that field into two sides by stretching a long rope on the ground right through the middle. And then we would pick teams. The object of the game was to try and capture the other team's flag. But if you were physically caught by someone from the other team while on their side of the rope, you had to go wait by their flag. And you couldn't be freed until one of your teammates successfully captured the other team's flag. It was a game of strategy and skill. You wanted to make sure you had some good defensive players on your team guarding the flag, but also some quick and sneaky teammates trying to capture the other team's flag. And we would play this game for hours sometimes. But oftentimes Andy and I would just take walks through the woods. There was a brook at one end that would freeze over in the winter. I remember one time walking on the ice and falling in. I mean, it was only about knee deep, but man, I was freezing on that walk home through the snow with wet boots and feet. And there was also this strange hill in one section of the woods that had a huge crevice in it. It was as if someone had torn a hole into the side of the hill. And it was deep too, well over our heads at its deepest point, and it stretched for at least a hundred feet or more. Andy said it was caused by unstable ground that would cause small little local earthquakes. Sometimes they were strong enough to feel the ground shake in his house. And I believed him, because every time I would see this crevice, it would seem to have gotten a little bit bigger. I began my hike by heading down the hill past the crevice and into the woods, where there were several paths going in different directions. I followed the one that I knew led to the brook, and my plan was to just walk along the water's edge for a while and see where I end up. Plus I figured I couldn't get lost this way. As long as I knew the brook was on my left, all I'd have to do is turn around and follow it with the brook on my right. Now there were no paths or anything here, so I had to do my best to navigate the uneven ground with rocks and roots and branches all around. Most of the trees in the woods were still green, and the water was rippling past me, swirling in some areas that were partially filled with fallen branches and leaves. Other than that, it was pretty quiet, except for, you know, the sounds of nature all around me. Before I knew it, an hour had gone by, at least, and I had already gone further into the woods than I ever had before. So everything was new to me. I continued following the brook, and suddenly I spotted what looked like a tunnel. There was a road up above, and the tunnel was sort of a bridge that allowed the brook to continue to flow under the road. Now I thought about walking up the hill and crossing over to the other side, but what fun would that be? So I slouched over and slowly entered the cement opening I didn't have too far to go. I could see to the other side, but the tunnel was just dark enough and long enough that I was glad I had my flashlight with me. I shined it on the ground in front of me, careful of where I was stepping. The water wasn't too deep, but I still didn't want to have to walk home with wet socks and sneakers. So I did my best to stay to the side along the rounded cement walls stepping slowly so I wouldn't slip. And then I noticed something blocking the water up ahead. 
What the hell is that? Looks like an animal. A large animal. As I got closer, I shined my flashlight on it, and I could see lots of dark feathers. It was the body of some kind of large bird. But whatever this bird was, it was now covered in flies and maggots. Ah, I think I'm going to throw up. I walked past it as quickly as I could and eventually came out the other side. And my hike continued for a while. At times, I would find myself having to stray up into the woods as the banks of the brook would get too steep or jagged. But I always kept the brook within hearing distance. After a while, I started thinking, how far have I gone? It has to have been a couple of hours by now. Suddenly, I felt it start to rain. Not hard, just a few spits of raindrops here and there. I considered turning around and going back, when suddenly, the skies opened up. Before I knew it, it was pouring out. I put my hood up over my head and looked around for someplace I could stay dry. And up ahead, I noticed a large brick building. It looked to be an old warehouse or mill. So I carefully made my way down to the edge of the brook and found a section that I could jump across, since the building was on the other side. I made it across, splashing mud all over my jeans and sneakers, and headed up the hill. At the top, there was a chain-link fence, about six feet high. It was wet and a little slippery, but I managed to climb over safely and into the courtyard. With the rain coming down hard, I walked around the perimeter of the brick building, looking for anything, an overhang or a roof, just something I could stand under and get out of this rain. But there was nothing. Eventually, I came across a couple of boarded up doors. I took out my knife and was able to pry one of the boards loose and climb through. I just wanted to get out of that rain so bad that I didn't even think about what might be waiting for me on the other side. After climbing through and shaking myself off, I found myself in an old lobby with hallways that went in three different directions. The walls all had paint peeling off of them and the floors were so dusty you could write your name in it. The whole place smelled dank and musty and the rain pelting against the roof was echoing through the building. There were some broken windows near the ceiling, letting in a little bit of light, but still dark enough that I decided to use my flashlight. The first thing I noticed when I clicked it on were my wet shoe prints on the floor, turning the old layers of dust into mud. Thankfully, I didn't see any other footsteps. So I guess I'm the first person to enter this building in a long time. The main hallway stretched down for a bit, but eventually led to a pair of big swinging doors. So I decided, since I'm waiting for the rain to stop, maybe I'll take a look around. You didn't think I was going to stay put, did you? I pushed one of the doors and the old springs echoed through the whole building. I walked through, letting go of the door and it made a huge banging sound as it swung back into place. Well, if there's anyone else in here, they know I'm here now. I entered what must have been the main workroom. It was huge, like the size of a supermarket except completely empty. The ceilings were at least four stories tall, and the floors were made of old, thick beams of wood. 
there were a few poles holding the ceiling up, but there was nothing else in there. No machines, no boxes, no furniture, nothing. I walked around a bit, taking it all in, when I noticed a set of metal stairs that led up to what looked like a couple of offices on a balcony that hung over the rest of the room. With nothing else to look at, I decided to see what was up there. The metal stairs made a strange pinging sound as I stepped on them. It sort of sounded like they hadn't been stepped on in many years. And with each step I took, I would pause, look around, and listen to make sure there was no one else in here with me. And about halfway up the stairs, I heard a weird sound. It was a sort of a humming sound. Maybe like electricity? But there can't possibly still be power in this building. I continued up the stairs and the humming kept getting louder as if I was getting closer to the source. I got to the top of the stairs and walked across the catwalk up to the first office. The door was closed, but there was a plexiglass window I could look through. It seemed to be empty, except for an old metal desk. Probably too big and heavy to move when they cleared the place out. I tried turning the doorknob, and it easily opened. And as I entered, I could hear the hum even louder now. I shined my flashlight around, but I couldn't find anything that would be making such a sound. Then I noticed another door on the side wall, and it seemed like the humming was coming from the other side. Maybe it was a live wire hanging from the ceiling, or maybe it's an old machine that's still working for some reason. I walked slowly up to the door, hesitant to open it for some reason. So I carefully pressed my ear up against the door and listened. The humming was strong, almost like a buzzing. It was as if I could feel it vibrating against the side of my face. So I slowly opened the door and peered in, but the room was dark. No windows or light. So I stepped about halfway in and shined my flashlight. And it looked like the walls and ceiling were moving. And I froze in place when I quickly realized what the sound was. Bees. I turned and slammed the door behind me as quickly as I could and backed out of the office onto the catwalk. As I rushed over to the metal stairs, I suddenly felt a sharp pain in my neck. One of these buggers stung me. I'm not allergic, but it scared me so much that my knees buckled and I ended up sliding halfway down the metal stairs, catching myself on the railing at the last second. I looked behind me, expecting a full swarm of bees to be chasing me. But luckily, there were none to be seen. So with one hand on the back of my neck and the other one holding my flashlight, I quickly made my way back down the rest of the stairs. When out of nowhere, there was this huge bang. It sounded like the swinging door from earlier. Is someone here? Hello? I yelled hoping I wouldn't get a response. But not knowing where to go, I ran off in the opposite direction of the swinging doors, looking around for another door to escape through, a window or something. But it was nothing but giant walls all around me. I walked around the perimeter of the large room and eventually ended up back at the swinging doors. It looks like... I'm going out the way I came in. 
I slowly pushed open the door, just a little bit, hoping it wouldn't make any sound, and just wide enough to peek through and see if anyone was on the other side. With no one there that I could see, I pushed the door open enough to slide through and headed back down the hallway towards the lobby, constantly looking around me with my flashlight to see if anyone or anything was there. As I made my way towards the boarded up doors, I looked down and could see my footprints from earlier. Except now, there was another set of footprints going from left to right across my path. But they weren't shoe prints or sneaker prints or animal prints. They looked like human footprints like someone not wearing any shoes. My neck was killing me, and I'd had enough of this old building, so I squeezed through the opening in the front door and ran back to the fence that I had climbed over before. The rain was still coming down, but I didn't care how wet I was. I just wanted to go home. quickly walked, jogging at times through the mud and rain, back towards home, thinking maybe I can just hide out in that tunnel out of the rain for a little while. Ah, but do I really want to sit in there next to a dead bird? When I finally got to the tunnel, I took out my flashlight and looked around, and thankfully, the bird was gone, washed away. I crouched down and made my way in, and after a minute or two of being slouched over on the slippery concrete, I decided, screw this, I don't care about the rain anymore. My neck hurts, I'm tired, I'm cold. So I made my way through the tunnel and out through the other side, and then like magic, suddenly the rain just stopped. My Paranormal Story is written, produced, and narrated by me, Tom Stewart. Music from this episode courtesy of Kevin McLeod at Incomptech.com. If you enjoy my stories and you'd like to support the podcast, there's a donate button on my website at MyParanormalStory.com. I've also got t-shirts and mugs for sale. Unfortunately, podcasts cost money and I'm hoping to keep mine free, so every little bit helps. I also recently wrote a book called The 10 Best Tools for Ghost Hunting. If you've ever wanted to learn more about the gadgets used in paranormal investigation, you can check it out on Audible, Kindle, or Amazon.com. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you'll know when I've added new episodes. And feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Just search for Tom Stewart or My Paranormal Story. If you have a podcast and would like to have me as a guest or... If you'd like to ask me a question or tell me about your paranormal story, you can email me at myparanormalstorypodcast at gmail.com. And of course, a good review and a five-star rating would really help my podcast reach even more people. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Tom Stewart, and this is My Paranormal Story. <laughs>